Hello everyone, this is Meghnad. In this module, we will learn arrays in C language. This is very important topic in C language and we will learn this with an example and we will understand this very clearly after this module. So let's get started. Now before we jump into arrays concept, let's take a simple example for adding two numbers. Let's see this. Now I want to add two numbers and display the sum. Let's see this file new empty file and this is lecture number 20 so let's just verify it yeah it's lecture number 20 yes now I'll save it and I'll give the file name as 20 dot 20 dot arrays example 1 now I'll write here include stdio.h include conivo.h void main now I want to find sum of two numbers so I'll write like int a comma b comma c for sum and I'll write here a is equal to 5 and b is equal to 10 now I'll write here printf sum is equal to percentile d comma and I'll write above this sum is equal to a plus b in this case we are not reading the numbers from the user if you want to read numbers from the user is very simple printf scan of you'll use it and now I'll write here sum is equal to a plus b and here I'll write sum now in place of person d some value will be printed now what if I want to find sum of three numbers I'll declare a b c and sum is equal to zero what if I want to find sum of ten numbers I have to write a b c d e f so what if I want to find sum of 50 numbers so I'll end up in declaring 50 variables the code looks really bad and instead of that we have the concept of arrays so in C language arrays are a collection of similar data types so using single variable you can represent more than one number now if you want to find sum of 10 numbers so let's take I want to find sum of 10 numbers so or sum of 5 numbers so I have to write like this int a b c d e and sum is equal to 0 now I want to read all the values from the user so printf enter first number like this enter first number and I have to write here scanf percentile d comma ampersand a like this I have to write I have to find it for all the numbers so that's really big and bad way to do it because in case of 5 numbers, we are writing this much, 5 printfs and scanfs. In case of 10 numbers, you have to write 10 variables, 20 numbers, 20 variables. So instead of this writing like this, what you can do is, you can declare an array. So how do you declare an array? Int of marks of 3. Now this marks can store 3 values. Now this marks can store 3 values and the index starts from 0 now let's show let's see how it works now you can see here I declare a variable marks and when you declare a variable marks of 3 you can assign the values like this marks of 0 equal to 65 marks of 1 is equal to 75 marks of 2 is equal to 85 now that will be stored like this marks of 0 65 1 75 marks of 2 this is called index this is called index and this is called the data now let's try to go back and see now so I declared variable int marks of 3 now how to store the values you can store like this or you can write a for loop as well for now I'll write like this marks of 0 is equal to 65 marks of 1 is equal to 75 marks of 2 is equal to 85 now like this we are storing so we declared the, we declared an array here this is how we declare an array I'm writing a comment declaring an array yeah anyway that's uh, not thick anyway because that's a comment so we just declared an array and here we are assigning the values now if I want to find some of the elements I can write here like this so let's write here int sum is equal to 0 and I can write here sum is equal to marks of 0 plus marks of 1 plus marks of 2 you can also write a for loop now printf 
sum is equal to percentile d comma sum. So what we learned in this case is we learned how to declare an array and how to assign the values. Remember the index starts from zero. Even though you declare here marks of three, the last value is not marks of three. The last value is just marks of two because the index starts from zero. So this is how we store the values in array and this is how we can find sum. And let's see if the code works or not. Get the hedge. Now let's save it and build the code and run the code. Now you can see here sum is equal to 25, which is right. So for storing the values, you can also use, use a for loop. For finding sum also, you can use a for loop. The same code can be written in a different way. So let's see how to do it. So I'll write like this. For, I'll, de I'll declare one more variable, comma i. And I need to start from zero for i is equal to zero because index starts from zero. i less than three. I'm writing i less than three because zero, one, two, i plus plus. Now I'll write here, I'll ask user printf, enter any number, and I'll store it scanf percentile d comma ampersand marks of i. Now first time, i value will be zero. First time, this is for reading the data from user. Reading data from user. In case if you're not seeing it, I'll give multi-line comments so that you can see it. Now, I'm just writing here. So this is the logic for reading the values from the user. So first time I value zero, it'll ask enter any number, it'll store in marks of zero. I value one, it'll store in marks of one. I value two, it'll store in marks of two. When I value becomes three, the condition fails, it'll go here. Now we'll write here, finding sum. Now we'll write one more for loop for finding sum. We can also do it in the same for loop, but we'll write one more for loop. For i is equal to zero, i less than three, i plus plus. I can write here, sum is equal to sum plus marks of i. Now in this case, what we are doing is, first sum we declared initialized to zero, so first time I value zero, zero plus marks of one, that'll be stored in sum, plus marks of two, that'll be stored in sum, plus marks of one and two, that'll be stored in sum. So we are getting the sum. Now we can add sum. So what we are doing here is, in this case, um, we are storing, we are writing the for loop to read the values from user, and we are writing another for loop for finding sum, and we are printing the sum. So now, the lesson we learned in this case is how to declare an array, and remember, array index starts from zero, and array index ends with one value less than what you declare here. And now, pictorially how array is represented is like this, marks of zero is 65, marks of one is 75, marks of two is 85. Now we'll try to learn more points about arrays, right? Let's see this now. Let me open notepad. The first point is arrays are collection of similar data types. That means you can only store either integer arrays or you can float arrays. So you cannot store, in this case, you cannot store one integer and one floating value, one character value. So you can only store collection of similar data types. So arrays are collection of similar data types. And the next very important point is array index starts from zero. Now third point is, third point is array size needs to be mentioned while declaring. So you must mention the size here while declaring. So you cannot leave it blank. So so some, some cases what people will normally do is they'll declare like this int max is equal to three. And then we'll mention here as max. That's also fine. But we are declaring here and we are initializing. So the value of this is three. Okay. So now the points that we are seeing here is that arrays are collection of similar data types. Array index starts from zero. Array size needs to be mentioned while declaring. And the, the fourth point is array variable size. Variable size is equal to data type size into array size. What does it mean by this? So now let's take integer in C language takes two bytes. In C language, integer takes two bytes. 
That depends on compiler, but most of the compilers for C language takes two bytes. Long takes four bytes. Now, now if I declare a variable like this, let's take for example, I declare int int age is equal to ten. Now this variable age takes two bytes. Now if I declare here long age is equal long p is equal to twenty. Now that takes four bytes. Now what if int of marks of three? Now this marks is actually integer of three numbers. Integer which stores three integers. So so the size of this marks is the memory size of this marks is data type size is two into array size is three. So now two threes are six. So this marks the size of this marks is six bytes. So that's what we mention here. Because this is integer of three integers, so two bytes integer into three. So if you if you declare like this long of data of five. Now in this case the size of this data variable will be long takes four bytes into this is five. So that's twenty. So that's how that's the point that's mentioned here. So array variable size is equal to data type size into array size. I hope you're very clear with these four. Uh, and the last but very important point is arrays require sequential memory. So arrays definitely require sequential memory. This is one drawback of arrays but um, which actually made into the concept of linked list made very popular. So arrays require sequential memory. So arrays definitely require sequential memory. So what does it mean? We'll understand it. Now, now what we'll do is let's try to understand this. Now, now I'll save this. This is arrays example one. Let's see this. Let's save it and and build it. Now let's run the code. Now I can see here first time I value is zero. It's asking enter in a number. Now eighty. Second time I'm entering ninety, and second third time hundred. So you can see the sum of two seventy. Now f first we declared an array and we have written a for loop to store the values in the array and we have written the for loop another for loop to find sum and we learned five points about arrays so arrays are collection of similar data types array index starts from zero array size needs to be mentioned while declaring array variable size equal to data type size into array size and last one is arrays required sequential memory which we are going to see more details in the next lecture right so i'll be explaining the next lecture and more about arrays in the next module so stay tuned and that's all for now